much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> now, welcome back, Lillian and Liz. You were on the show last time. Everyone, of course, gets two shots to reach the Pointless final. This is Lillian and Liz's second time. Yes. Uh, remind us how you did. Not very well, unfortunately. <laughs> Don't oh. like cricket. Oh, it was cricket. It was county cricket. Yes. yes. Well, that won't be back. Not for at least another couple of shows. Lily, what do you do in your spare time? Um, a number of things, but I, I sort of have fits and starts, and I've done a course at night school on welding. What? <laughs> <laughs> have you really? That's and I was, I was dressed in an orange boiler suit. I looked like a little fat tangerine. <laughs> 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 Very good. Well, lovely to have you back on the show. Thank you. Hope you do better this time. I'm sure you will. Uh, next, we welcome Lucy and Rod. Now, how do you two know each other? Uh, we started off working together about three years ago, um, and it quickly turned into us going out, and we've been going out ever since. That's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> what, what work were you doing? Uh, we used to work for a quite well-known high street chain. And you met in the in the stockroom, did you downstairs? Well, we didn't meet in the stockroom. <laughs> But... <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't meet in the we stock room. We, we did go to the stock room from, <laughs> from time to time. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, very best of luck to the pair of you. It's lovely to have you here. And welcome, Daniel and John. How do you two know each other? Um, we met at a Gilbert and Sullivan Appreciation Society in Leeds. <laughs> very good. <laughs> indeed, indeed, we did. What's your, what's your favourite operetta? Uh, it's got to be the Mikado. It's got to be. Yeah. A wandering minstrel eye. Mm, indeed. <laughs> that is the Mikado, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, thank God, that. <laughs> yeah, a few we. Well, very best of luck to the pair of you. <laughs> Finally, we have Mark and Amanda. How do you two know each other? Uh, we met through mutual friends about eight years ago or so, and we've been married for 18 months now. Oh, many congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, Mark, what do you do? Uh, I'm a residential support worker, and I work with... Uh, young people and just help them life skills and cook clean, try to set boundaries, which they never, never want to adhere by because they're teenagers. <laughs> well, indeed. How about you, Amanda? Um, I work as a travel consultant, so oh, uh, I send people to exotic places all over the world. So, oh, um... excellent. Well, we'll be finding out more about all of you throughout the show. Uh, there's only one more person, of course, left for me to introduce. He is a beacon of knowledge in the dark world of obscure facts and figures. He's my pointless friend. He's Richard. Hiya. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good afternoon. A very, very good afternoon to you, Richard. Are you well? I, I, I mustn't grumble. That's good. Are you excited about the show ahead? I am. Uh, we've got a good show. We've only got one returning pair today, and that's uh, Lillian and Liz. Didn't cover themselves in glory last time. <laughs> I think it's fair to say. I think Twickenham Definitely. is not the best answer we've had this series when asking for no. a, a first-class county cricket team. Um, <laughs> even, even Twickenham Shear might have been a better answer, I think. Uh, and, the, and the worst news for you that, uh, today as well, Lillian, is there are no welding questions. Oh. Uh -huh. well, I know quite often we have them, don't we? But yeah, no, no welding questions at all today. Yeah. Well, that's strange. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, we've put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this, of course, is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers that they didn't get. But, of course, what everyone's trying to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add 250 quid to the jackpot. Now, nobody won the jackpot last time, so we had another £1,000 to that, so today's jackpot starts off at £3,500. <laughs> Right, let's play Pointless. So, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated, so be very careful that's not you. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, our first category this afternoon is... Famous actors. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? <laughs> and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Jack Nicholson films as they could. Jack Nicholson films. Richard. 
Yeah, we're looking for any film made for a cinema release for which Jack Nicholson has received an acting credit up to the start of 2011. Uh, voiceover acting counts, but we don't count short films and TV films and documentaries, that sort of thing, as usual. Uh, so any Jack Nicholson film, there are a huge amount of films on this list, as you can imagine, and a lot of them are pointless. Right, Liz and Lillian, you are going first. You all drew lots before the show and you are in pole position this afternoon. Liz, Jack Nicholson films. Well, I'm not a fan of Jack Nicholson. I do know one that he was definitely in. What's it going to be? One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. What do you think, Lillian? Yes, that's, Very that's good. correct. <laughs> Lillian, oh, it's correct. Good, good. <laughs> oh. Very good. Well, you're hoping to score as few points as possible. You're saying one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Let's see. I think it might be correct. Lillian says it is. <laughs> Let's see how many people said it. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. It's right. Down it goes. Very, very well done, Liz. That scores you 26. In 1975, one for the Cuckoo's Nest, and then he won, he won the Oscar for it, uh, for his role as R.P. McMurphy. Very good. Thanks, Richard. So then, Lucy. Right. Um, the one I'm going to go for is going to score very highly, but I'm going to go for The Shining. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. The Shining, <laughs> that one. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said... The Shining. There it is. 41. Not such a terrible score after all, Lucy. The Shining scoring 41, Richard. Uh, yeah, The Shining, a pretty good score. The uh, Stanley Kubrick movie, of course, from 1980. From Genu 1980? 1980, yeah. Was that when it was made? No. <laughs> I always imagined it was much earlier than that. No, 1980. 1980. Yeah. Uh, if you were the other way around, of course, I could say, and here's Johnny, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's Daniel. <laughs> so then, Daniel, what's the most obscure Jack Nicholson film you can think of? I have a funny feeling you might have a few up your sleeve. Um, I do like Jack Nicholson. I've seen a handful of movies. Um, I think my particular favourite, probably one I'll go for, so I'll probably say About Schmidt. About Schmidt. You're hoping to score as few points as possible. You're hoping it's correct, of course. Uh, let's see if it is, and if it is, let's see how many people said about Schmidt. But it's right. I have a feeling this might go a long way down. Very well done, Daniel! <laughs> Very well done, indeed. <laughs> That's a pointless answer. It adds 250 quid to today's jackpot total, taking... The sum total up to 3,750. Very, very well done. And best of all, it scores you nothing. Very well played, Daniel. That's the way to introduce yourself to the show. Yeah, from 2002, about Schmidt. It's a very good film. Actually, he plays sort of a 60-something. You're trying to re-examine his life. It's more fun than that makes it sound. <laughs> very good. Now then, Mark. Remember, we are looking for Jack Nicholson films. I am going to go for... Oh... Anger management. <laughs> very, very good. Yes. Anger management. You're hoping to score as few points as possible, Mark? Yes, I am hoping. We'll let's see. see if anger management is correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. If it's right, I have a feeling this will go a long way down as well. There we are. It's right. You knew it was right. Very, very good. Down it comes. Six! That's a pretty good score, Mark. Not bad at all. Anger management, Richard. Yeah, well played, Mark. I thought that would actually be uh, a little bit lower than six. Mm. He stars opposite Adam Sandler from, uh, from 2003. OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. On zero, Daniel and John. Excellent low score. Um, then on six, just a little bit ahead, Mark and Amanda. Fabulous answer there with anger management. Then we leap up to 26. It's not a massive leap, though, Liz. And better than last time. Much better than last time. And we then go up significantly higher, I'm afraid, to Lucy. The shiny... Well, better, it's better than getting it wrong, you see. Yeah. We always have to remember that. Exactly. Anything could happen in the next pass, as we're about to discover. We're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? 
Right now, Amanda, we are looking for Jack Nicholson films. I think he may have been in a film called As Good As It Gets. Mark, I can't quite see Mark's eyes. No, I think Mark's pleased with that. I think Mark's pleased with that. He is, he's pleased, he's nodding, he's nodding. You are on six. The high scorers are Rod and Lucy on 41. If you can score 34 or less with this answer, you are definitely through to the next round. Right. It's not the end of the world if you're over that because the other three pairs have yet to answer. But there is your red line. Below that red line, and as good as it gets, we'll see you through to the next round. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said as good as it gets. There we are, well done. Very well done, Amanda. Down you go, six. That's very, very well done indeed. You equal Mark's low score in the first pass, taking the total up to 12. Richard? Yeah, well played, Amanda. You're safety through. It's another Oscar-winning performance from Jack Nicholson in As Good As It Gets. Nominated for About Schmidt as well. Not bad going, is it? Not half bad. Now, John, didn't Daniel do brilliantly? He did OK. Mm. Do you share Daniel's expertise on obscure Jack Nicholson films. I think I might be able to do OK. I think I can make a pull something Oh, that's out, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with something that he wasn't really the lead star of, which I'm hoping will pay off. I'm going to guess Terms of Endearment. Well, you're on nothing at the moment. The high scores remain Rod and Lucy. If you can score 40 or less, you are definitely in the next round. There's your red line. Let's see if Terms of Endearment gets you below that red line. Very well done. Very well done indeed. Down it goes. <laughs> That's a fabulous score, John. Brilliant. John's Van Dimmitt scores you one, gives you a total of one. Richard. Uh, John is rubbish compared to Daniel, though, isn't he? Yeah, isn't he? Don't you think? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 1983, another film uh, for which he won an Oscar, actually. He won an Oscar for As Good As It Gets. He won an Oscar for Terms of Endearment, Best Supporting Actor. And he won one for One for The Cuckoo's Nest and was nominated for one for About Schmidt. So, so many of these answers so far are, are Oscar-winning or nominated roles. Amazing, isn't it? I imagine by the time you've got that many Oscars, you just want to hollow it out, put a, put a, a, a flex up there and turn it into a nice lamp. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done, John. Now, Rod, we come to you. You know what you have to do here. It's a toss-up between you and Lillian. And if you like, you will just fight it out here, <laughs> or you could do it through the medium of Jack Nicholson films. Which would you prefer? Uh, I'll go for the uh, latter option. Um... Really dull, but yes, yeah, <laughs> right. OK. I'm not a very good fighter. OK. Um, all the ones I wasn't going to answer have gone, um, so I'll go for uh, one early in his career, and I think he was in it. I think it's called Five Easy Pieces. Five Easy Pieces. Pieces, yeah. You're the high scorers. Obviously, there's no red line. There's no score that you have to beat. You just have to score as few points as possible. Let's see if Five Easy Pieces will do it for you. How many people said it? It's right, Rod. I think it's a brilliant answer. I would be very surprised if this doesn't go all the way down. Very, very well done, Rod. It's not quite a pointless, but it scores you one, and it takes your total up to maybe a score that might save you 42, Richard. Uh, well played, Rod. Very high-quality round, isn't it? Lots of good answers. Isn't it? Uh, and once again, nominated for an Oscar for, uh, for that role. Wow. When he read the script for Terms of Endearment, he said, the second I read the script, I knew I'd win the Oscar. <laughs> wow. That's cocky, isn't it? Straight down to the electrical shop. Yeah. <laughs> so drill a hole through that. Drill a hole, just some flex, please, and a pluck. Oh, and a bulb. <laughs> right now, Lillian, Rod has just thrown a five easy pieces shaped gauntlet at your feet. <laughs> he certainly has. Mm. He is on 42. They remain the high scorers, Rod and Lucy. You are on 26. If you can find an answer that scores 15 points or less, we'll be saying goodbye to Rod and Lucy, and you and Liz will be staying for the next round. Unfortunately, some of my answers have already been found. Mm. <laughs> but I'm going to have a go at the Witches of Eastwick. The Witches of Eastwick. There's your red line. As I said, you have to score 15 or less. If the Witches of Eastwick gets you below that red line, you are through to the next round. That's we say goodbye to Rod to, and Lucy. It's a long way to go, Alexander. OK, which is of Eastwick? Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. This is very, very exciting, Lillian. <laughs> <sighs> it is. 
<laughs> it's right. Good. It's right. Look, it's herring down towards that red line. Is it going to go? Uh I, I, I want to go and sit on that line and just push it down <laughs> so we can have you on the show a little bit longer. Oh, that's so unfair. I'm so sorry. It's a brilliant answer, though. Thank you. Very, very... I'd completely forgotten about the Witch of Eastwick. Um, evidently, 18 people hadn't. Um, that takes your total up to 44. Richard? Yeah, Tough Luck, Lillian, 1987 film based on the, on the John Updike novel, which uh, Jack Nicholson is rather good in. There are many, many pointless answers here. These are some of the things that uh, would have seen you through. There's a Bout Schmidt, which we've already had from, uh, from Daniel. He's in broadcast news, of course, with William Hurt. Uh, going South was a pointless answer. Iron Weed is a pointless answer, another Oscar nomination for that. He was in Reds, that's a pointless answer. The romantic comedy, Something's Gotta Give, that was pointless. The Crybaby Killer, The Evening Star, and The, uh, the Two Jakes, which was the, the, the sort of loose Chinatown sequel. That was also pointless, so very well done if you've got any of those at home. Let's take a look at the, uh, the most obvious answers. These are the ones that most of our 100 people said. Uh, you've already seen a few of these. So Batman is 23. So Liz said One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and as you say, it was a low score, but actually the second highest score of all. It's second most well-known film, 26. And uh, right at the top, we've already had it as well, from Lucy, The Shining. 41. Very interesting. Well, thank you so much, Richard. So, at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm so sorry, it's Lillian and Liz. Gutted. Gutted, and it's not yeah. that high a score, no. either. Turns out all these people were film buffs. <laughs> Who yeah, would really? have known? <laughs> what have you learned from your time on Pointless? Not the study metal work and go and do <laughs> films next. <laughs> go to night schools on films. <laughs> Well, it's been fabulous having you on the show. I'm sorry we say goodbye to you so soon, but you've been wonderful contestants. It's been fabulous being here. Thank, Thank you, Alexander. Thank you very much. Thanks Brilliant. for playing. Thanks. But for the remaining three pairs now, it's time for round two. Right, well, only two pairs can make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so one team is going to be leaving us at the end of this round disappointed. The category for round two is the USA. The USA. Amanda likes this. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And our round two question this afternoon concerns US state abbreviations. US state abbreviations. In this round, we're about to show you a list of abbreviations for American states. We asked 100 people to tell us which state they represent. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you six abbreviations uh, on each pass. The more obscure ones will score you fewer points. If you give us an incorrect answer, though, you'll score 100 points and see how many of the 12 uh, you can get at home. Thanks, Richard. So we are looking for the states that these abbreviations represent. And we have got C-A-A-L M-T-K-S-C-T-N-Y. I'll read those one more time. C-A-A-L-M-T-K-S-C-T-N-Y. Right, Lucy. Right, OK. I'm going to go with A-L being Alabama. A-L being mm. Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> Barack Obama's brother, Alabama. <laughs> 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 OK, let's see if Alabama is indeed AL. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Alabama, good luck. It's right. 45. <laughs> 45. It, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't devastatingly difficult, that one, was it? So 45, no. see, I'd say yeah. it was about right. About yeah. right. Sort okay. of commensurate score, I'd say. 45, Richard. Uh, yeah, well done, Lucy. I think that was quite a risky choice. Very interesting. Thank you very much, Richard. John, remember, we are looking for the US states that are represented by these abbreviations. Can you think of a good few American states? Yeah, I can. You... I, I can. And I are any of them to... suggesting some kind of affiliation with yeah, these. Yeah, there's a, a couple I can guess at. It's just whether it, but it could so easily be wrong. But I'm just going to take an absolute, well, an educated punt, and I'm going to say MT Montana. 
MT, there it is, Montana, you're saying. Let's mm. see if MT is indeed Montana, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Well done. Well done, John. There we are, down it comes. Montana scoring you 22. <laughs> A good answer. <laughs> Richard. Yeah, well done, John. It's one of the, the, the least populated states in America. It's only got 6.8 people per square mile in Montana. <sighs> Thanks very much, Richard. Now then, Amanda. Yes. Amanda, this plays right into your hands, well, being a, a travel consultant as you yes, are. Yes, it could be embarrassing, couldn't it? It I... could be. <laughs> yeah. Happily, it won't be. <laughs> no, no. I'm going to go with the one that I'm most confident of, but think it's worth fewer points. So I'm going to go with KS Kansas. KS Kansas. It does look a little bit like a departure board for a domestic flight, doesn't it? <laughs> let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Kansas KS. It's right. It's a... Ooh. Ooh. Turns out a lot of people knew that one, Amanda. That scores you 79. Richard? Yeah, big score, Amanda. W were there any others you attempted to go for? Yeah, but I thought they would have been worth more than that, so... Yeah, the best one you could have gone for would have been CT. Do you know CT? See, that's the tough one. It's the best answer left on the board. It's Connecticut. Yeah. Would have scored uh, 29. CA, obviously, is California. But uh, that would have set you about 77. See, less than Kansas, but still a lot. And uh, NY is the, uh, the biggest answer on the board with 91. So Montana, actually, the, the best answer on the board, John. Very good. Thanks, Richard. So we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. 22, John and Daniel. Very, very good score. The best on the board, Richard said. Um, 45, Lucy, for um, Alabama. And then Amanda, unfortunately, Kansas. Very, very costly, that one. 79, that's a high score. So, Mark, you know what you have to do in the next part. Yes, you have <laughs> a bit of a, a mountain to climb. Um, very good, but we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more abbreviations for American states on the board, and here they are. We've got R-I, A-Z, F-L, M-E, M-S, O-K. Read those again. R-I, A-Z, F-L, M-E, M-S, O-K. And remember, we are looking for the states that they represent, and you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Mark. Mm. You're the high scorers on 79. You have to find the best answer you can. Yes, I do, don't I? <laughs> I'm still not very confident on any of these. I'm going to go for one of the obvious ones, I'm afraid, and it's the AZ for the Arizona. AZ for Arizona. Mm -hmm. There's no red line for you because you are the high scorers, but let's see if Arizona is indeed AZ, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. That's right. Oh! It is exactly the same high score as Amanda got for Kansas. It takes your total up to usually symmetrical 158. Richard. What's symmetrical again, because you both got six in the first round. They've got exactly the same scores as each other in both rounds. If we gave up prizes for symmetricality, <laughs> you, would be, uh, you would be garlanded. Just symmetry, just symmetry. What did I say? Symmetricality. <laughs> 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 you can, but it's, I bet it probably does mean it's probably a slightly nuanced version of symmetry. Oh, symmetricality. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> um, yeah, Arizona, well done. 79 points, though, obviously home of the Grand Canyon. I think a big score is the only, the only state with a Z in its name, so I think maybe one of the more obvious abbreviations. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, Mark and Amanda, your score is now in red, which I'm afraid means that you are unequivocally the high scorers. No one's going to be able to overtake your high score, even if they score 100 points. So I'm afraid we will be saying goodbye to you at the end of this round. So, Daniel, the good news is you're on 22. Mm. Yeah. Even if you score 100 points, yeah. you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Indeed. So, with that kind of safety net below you, mm. why not see if you can find a really obscure one? There might be a pointless answer on the board. You never know. There might be. Um... I don't know whether I should try and be clever or just play it safe. Just I, my did you listen dignity. to a word I just said? <laughs> <laughs> try and be clever. Um, if we do nothing else in this life. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, 
I have a feeling what ME is, but I think I'll probably go for OK. Uh, Oklahoma. You want to say OK, Oklahoma? Uh, there it is, bottom of the board. Uh, let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. And unsurprisingly, it scores you very high. 73 takes your total up to 95. Richard. See, now I think Daniel's rubbish compared to John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Oklahoma, uh, 73 points. Thank you very much, Richard. And so, Rod, we come to you. You are on 45, doesn't matter what you score. So why not have some fun with this board? It's all yours, so well, talk I, I, us through I've everything. I've no idea what MS might be. Well apart from the obvious. Uh, I, I, you can tell us what you think the obvious is. I don't know is. if it's Mississippi or Missouri. Um, right. M-E, I have no idea. F-L looked like Florida. But I was going to choose R-I, because I think it's a state. I think it's Rhode, Rhode Island, but I'm not quite sure. Rhode Island. OK, let's see if Rhode Island is indeed R-I. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Very well done, Rod. 24, that scores you a very good score indeed. Takes your total up to 69. Richard. Yeah, well done, Rod. Uh, the smallest state in America it would fit more than 500 times into the largest state, which is, which is Alaska. And, Daniel, do you want to have a go at, uh, at what ME is? It's the best answer on the board. I, th I think it was Maine. You'd have been right. Would have been oh. the best answer. It would have scored you 10 points, Maine. Mm -hmm. uh, let's fill in the other two. Florida, obviously, is yeah. FL. Uh, that would have scored you a very hefty 90. And MS, what do you think it is? Mississippi. It is Mississippi, yes, yeah, exactly yeah. right. Well done. Thanks very much, Richard. So, at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score. I'm afraid it's Mark and Amanda. Oh, bad luck, but two symmetrical scores. <laughs> what a fabulous couple you are. Uh... You match each other like for like. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> the good news is we get to see you again next time, which is going to be fantastic. Yeah. What are you Thank going to you. take away from your experience on Pointless this afternoon? Probably a book on US states and their abbreviation. <laughs> and <Atlas>. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you call shutting the door after the horse has bolted. <laughs> um, very good. Well, we shall see you next time. We look forward to that Thank very you. much. Thanks so much for playing, Luke. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are going to get even more exciting now as we enter the head to head. Very well done, Daniel and John, Lucy and Rod. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for today's jackpot, which currently stands at £3,750. <laughs> now, you're going to go head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair and you will win that question. The pair who get the best of three will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. Here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many long-running West End shows as they could. Long-running West End shows, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the eight shows that have been running in London's West End for at least ten consecutive years and were still running at the start of 2011. They can have changed venues in that time, but they have to have had a continuous run of at least ten years in the West End. There's eight shows that have been going for ten years or more and were still going at the start of 2011. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Now, Daniel and John, because you've played best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. Mm. It's difficult, yeah. I'd go with that. I think that one should be more. Yeah, obvious. OK. Got them. OK. Uh, we're going to go with The Mousetrap. You're going to go with The Mousetrap. Mm -hmm. Lucy and Rod. Mousetrap is off. <laughs> Don't bite. It's kind of a toss-up between Les Mis or... Rod reckons The Lion King might still be going. Um, I know it's been there an awful long time. It has been going forever. Yeah. Roadworks come and go, but The Lion King always seems to still be there. So I'm not quite sure. That's what it says on the poster. <laughs> 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 yes, we're going to go with that one. We'll go with The Lion King. The Lion King, very good. The Lion King it is. So we have The Mousetrap and we have The Lion King. Daniel and John said The Mousetrap. Let's see if it's right. I think it might be. And let's see how many people said it. The Mousetrap. Very well done. 
64. That's quite a high scoring one, isn't it? Now, Lucy and Rod, you have gone for the Lion King. Mm. Sorry. Let's see if that is correct and how many people said it, the Lion King. It's right. And it beats the mousetrap. <laughs> <laughs> Only ten for the Lion King. Very well done, Rod and Lucy. After the first question, it is one nil to you, Richard. Yeah, well played, Rod. But actually, Les Miserables also would have uh, won the points. There's eight shows on this list. Six of them are musicals, actually. But it's quite an interesting list. Right at the bottom is one of the plays, The Woman in Black, which has been on since 1989. Uh, there's Mamma Mia with nine and Lion King with ten. They both opened in 1999. Uh, Chicago also would have scored you ten. That was uh, from 1997, that's been on since. Uh, Blood Brothers scores you 13, that's been on since 1988. Phantom of the Opera with 34, that's been on since 1986. Les Miserables are there with 45, that just celebrated its 25th anniversary in 2010. Uh, and the Mousetrap up there on 64, it's been going since 1952, the Mousetrap, which is uh, it's a world record. They've had some intervals, haven't they? Yes, they have had some interviews here, to be fair. So the audience has been able to go out and go back in again, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You, know, they haven't, oh, they haven't... you can get an ice cream, yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. So here is your second question. Lucy and Rod, if you win this question, you are straight through to the final. Mm -hmm. Daniel and John, you know what you have to do. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many books of the Pentateuch as they could. So you can Richard. Do. Yeah, where you go. <laughs> uh, no, don't panic. Uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the Pentateuch is the, is the common name for the first five books of the Old Testament. So we're looking for any of the first five books of the Old oh. Testament in the King James or authorised version of the Bible. So any of the first five books of the Old Testament. How relieved are you to hear that explanation? <laughs> oh. <laughs> OK, this time, Lucy and Rod, you get to go first. Any of those first five books? Great Genesis, it's going to be more obvious. Yeah. 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 Do you want to say it? Okay. Um, uh, I'm glad it was explained uh, first. Uh, I think we're going to go for Exodus. You're going to go for Exodus. Exodus. Yeah. Okay, Daniel and John, you have to win this one to stay in the game. I'm going to take a guess and say. I think this is probably wrong, but I'm sure Genesis would be higher than Exodus, so I'm going to say Solomon. You're going to say Solomon. OK, so we have Exodus and Solomon. Exodus, Lucy and Rod, let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Exodus. That's right. 51, that scores you. 51. And Daniel and John are going for Solomon. This has to be right, and it has to score lower than 51. Otherwise, we say goodbye to you right here, right now. Solomon, is it right? How many people said it? <laughs> bad luck, bad luck. An incorrect answer. So after the second question, Lucy and Rod are through to the vinyl 2-0. Richard? Yeah, unlucky guys, and as you imagine, Genesis also wouldn't have won you the points. Let's take a look at uh, all five of them. Uh, there's Numbers, which is the, the fourth book, Leviticus, uh, which is the third. They both would have scored you 32. Deuteronomy, it's the fifth book of the, uh, of the Old Testament, 39. Exodus on 51 and Genesis right up the top there on 79. Very good. Well, thanks so much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid it's Daniel and John. Oh, dear. Your barren songs and snatches didn't, didn't help you. <laughs> <laughs> Bad luck. You've been great contestants, though. Thank you so much for playing. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you, guys. But for Lucy and Rod, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win our jackpot of £3,750. <laughs> Well, congratulations, Lucy and Rod. You've seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy.
You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at an impressive £3,750. <laughs> now, the rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no one could think of. Now, we've had one pointless answer on the show today. You only need to find one more now to go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category, and you can choose from these three options. And they are celebrities, oh, education, fashion designers. Fashion what designers. do you think? <laughs> fashion designers is out. That's out? <laughs> That's out altogether. OK. Uh, education, I'm not quite sure about. I think we're going to go with celebrities. You're going to go with celebrities. Shunning education. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many who do you think you are celebrities as they could. Who do you think you are, Indeed. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any person who's been the main subject of an episode of the BBC genealogy series, Who Do You Think You Are, all the way up to series seven, which was uh, broadcast in 2010. Also, we're not looking for anyone who was on the American series, which they showed over here. Just the, uh, just the British series. The one person we won't allow you to say is uh, Alexander, <laughs> who was on it. And you're descended from... Uh... From apes. <laughs> 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 and then briefly in between, from William the Conqueror, weren't you? There you are, yeah. I think he would be very proud. I think he'd put on. his feet up after a day of conquering <laughs> and say, that boy's a chip off the old block. Yep. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Richard, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £3,750 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Uh, well, Jeremy Paxman's right, isn't he? John Hurt. Kim Cattrall. The no. one I'm thinking of is um, the guy who plays Rick in Hobby Setting. I was thinking that, you're, yeah. It's Hugh... Quashy? Quashy? Quashy or... Yeah. I can't really think. Um... Julian Clary, John Hurt... There's been quite a few, haven't there? Um... I can't remember any. My mind has gone blank. Well, how do the ones we thought of? Take those three. So... Your bloke from Casualty? Hobby City. Hobby City. Um... I'd say John Hurt as well. I'm not yeah. quite sure if he's been done. I think Kim Cattrall, so... Has she been on the English one or the American one? Yeah, she was on the English one, cos she's actually English. Is she? Yeah. Five seconds left. Oh, it's Boris Johnson was on it as well, wasn't he? Oh, thank you, Tim. There is your minute. Well, you've come up with lots of answers there. Which three are you going to submit? There's one person I can think of, but I can't quite remember his surname. His first name's Hugh. Oh. I think Hugh... I think it's pronounced Quashy it? or Quashy. Yep, Hugh yeah. Quashy, we'll, we'll take that. Boris Johnson? Yeah, should we go for Boris Johnson? Yeah. Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson. Johnson. And, and... Did you say John Hurt? Yeah. yeah and okay. John Hurt. And John Hurt. We were looking for people who featured on Who Do You Think You Are. Which do you think of those is your most confident answer, your, your best shot at a pointless? The first one, I think. Yeah, probably the one Hugh Quashi. No yeah. OK, Hugh Quashi. <laughs> we'll put his name up last. Which of the remaining two do you think is your least confident? Boris Johnson. Probably Boris. Boris Johnson. Yeah. We'll bung Boris up first. <laughs> and <laughs> second, we therefore John put Hurt. John, John Hurt. Hurt. Yeah. OK, we'll put them up on the board in that order. Here they are Boris Johnson, John Hurt, and Hugh Quashi. There they are. We were looking for people who have featured on Who Do You Think You Are. This was your least confident answer. You only need one of these to be bind us, and you will win that £3,750 jackpot. Let's see if Boris Johnson is right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Boris Johnson. Right. Down it comes. This for £3,750. Very, very good score. Look at that, still going down. Oh! <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's not a pointless answer, but I tell you what, it tells you something about your 100 people there. That was your... <laughs> 
least confident answer, and it scored two. Well, let's just have a think about that £3,750. What, what would you spend that on? Um, I think we've talked about going down to Ireland, which isn't the most exotic of places. Oh, it's lovely, though. But neither of us have ever been, so Yeah, you've got to nice. get there. Yeah. Oh, that'd be heaven. Yeah, and then a bit of spending money. Very good luck with your next answer, then. You only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. This has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. Let's see if John Hurt is right, and if it is, let's see how many people said John Hurt. Well, it's right. We saw that Boris Johnson went all the way down to two. He was one of the more colourful subjects of that show. How far down is John Hurt going to go? Is he going to win you the jackpot? £3,750? No! So close! Oh. <laughs> Oh, that was that was very. This is all going in the right direction, I have to say. <laughs> oh, fingers crossed. Yeah. Hugh Quashi, he's your last chance and your best chance, by your reckoning. Hmm. If this answer is pointless, if this goes all the way down to zero, oh my God. then County Meath, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go there, obviously. It's just <laughs> popped into my stupid head. Okay. Hugh Quashi, is it right? And if it is, how many people said it? Hugh Quashi. It's right. Well, as I said, Boris Johnson went down to two, John Hurt went down to one. Will Hugh Quashi win you that jackpot by going down to zero? Down it goes. Oh, no! Oh, oh. that was close. Oh, bad luck. Oh. Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that crucial, pointless answer. Oh, I'm so sorry. So I'm afraid you won't be leaving with that £3,750. And that will roll over to the next show. But you have been amazing contestants. And you do get to take home our pointless trophy. There you are. <laughs> oh, dear. So, Richard, what were the pointless answers? Goodness, two, one and one. I think that might be the closest anyone's ever got to the jackpot without winning it, it's... which I know is no <laughs> consolation. But uh, it's something at least, isn't it? Yeah. But there are a whole load of pointless answers, oh, so yeah. let's take a little look. Bill Oddie was Bill pointless. Oddie. Alan Cumming, Griff Reese jones all of these would have won you the money. Ian Hislop was a pointless answer. Lawrence Lorraine and Bowen, Matthew Pinsent. Really? Uh, David Baddiel is on the first series, Kevin Watley, Natasha Kaplinsky, all of those people will won you the money. Well done if you've got any at home, but that's really, really, really tough luck. Uh, well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you both. I'm so sorry, but you have done... You've been wonderful contestants, yeah, uh, really Rod. Really good fun, we? Yeah. Yeah, well, you've been brilliant. Thank you so much for playing. Thank you. So nobody's won our jackpot today, which means it rolls over onto the next show, and we will then be playing for £4,750. <laughs> Join us next time, see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>